Okay, welcome everyone. It's Tony Crawford. It's a couple of minutes to 10, but we might as well start. Um, we've got a lot to cover, lots of interesting stuff, and thank you all for joining this meeting. It was a bit of an experiment because for us it's pretty new technology, and there's always challenges even at the best of times with technology. But right now it's a very popular uh, video conferencing service, and we'll see how it does for us. So I'm just going to run over the agenda quickly. Um, I'm, Kevin's going to give a little quick introduction and I'll ask John to say a few words as well and then I'm going to give an overview of YouTube TV. I've got about 10 or so slides. I'd like to cover what YouTube TV is and how it fits in the context of things Then I'd like to do a demo using uh, a TV. I've got a TV here in the room with my iPad camera pointing at it and uh, I think we'll have some time to go over the website because there's a lot of very interesting and useful information on the YouTube TV website. If you have questions as we go through, just put them in the chat and I'll try and keep an eye on them and answer them if I can as we go along, if it's pertinent to what I'm discussing. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A, so I'll be able to answer any more questions. Plus, we got talented people here. We got John, we got Kevin, we got Mike, we got a lot of people from the uh, steering committee and also all of you who have already used YouTube TV for some time. I'm sure you've got a lot of experience. So between us, this is meant to be a informal and collaborative type of session. Between us, we should be able to push our knowledge along quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to that. So again, uh, put your questions in the uh, chat box, but at the end, we'll open up to gallery view and we can open up for discussion and chat uh, and talk as well. So, um, Kevin, would you like to say a few words first? Sure. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our first virtual meeting uh, that we're having. And I, I, I can't stress how important it is to acknowledge the efforts of Tony and John, uh, who have made, made this all possible. We are very lucky to have uh, these two folks as part of the group that's allowing us to continue to con uh, connect um, virtually at best, uh, but it's better than, than not connecting at all. Um, I know that there's no not many other clubs that are doing this unless, quite frankly, Tony's involved with it. Uh, but we, I, I want to thank them both. I really appreciate the effort that they're putting into this. And I want to thank all of you for joining today because uh, I think this is going to, uh, it, it's going to be a very interesting and informative session. And we are social distancing. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you know the phone would ring now? Okay, sorry about that folks. So anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, thank you all for coming, and I'm going to turn the program over to Tony. Okay. Uh, uh, here's Tony. Yeah, I think, thanks, Kevin. I think, John, would you like to say a few words as well? Yeah, sure enough. Um, thanks. I, I really appreciate Tony more and more every day. Uh, you can thank me a little bit, but you got to thank Tony a lot. Uh, Tony is really the, the one that heads this all up. And I'm kind of helping in the background, but um, um, this is not something that uh, came easy, but we'll have a few glitches possibly down the road. We've tried to anticipate some of those glitches and uh, uh, hopefully uh, you'll find this time valuable and you'll learn a little something maybe about Zoom and hopefully a lot about YouTube. And, and um, uh, what I'm enjoying most is I'm putting names to faces. And uh, I know some of you because I've worked with you before, and I appreciate seeing the names and faces and matching those up. It's hard to do when you have a large meeting. So welcome, and um, let's get started. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay, let me switch to uh, my slides here. There's a lot of buttons I have to push. Okay, so as I say, I've got about uh, 10 or so slides, so let me start with this one. I think I've shown this at a court cutters meeting before, but I, I like to show it because it puts everything in context. How does it all fit together? So we're all in this to get our local channels 
to get some of the cable channels. Obviously, you know, many of us are already uh, signing on to premium channels like Netflix. And uh, there's a lot of free channels, actually, that, you know, some with advertising, some without, that are also well worth watching. So we have this whole collection of uh, TV and shows and movies that we can get through the Internet instead of the traditional cable and satellite service. That's how we used to get these before. But now if we want to switch and we want to go through the Internet, there's a lot of advantages to it, obviously. One way, of course, is to get your antenna and get your local channels that way. And if that's all you wanted, that's not bad. But mostly we also want cable channels. So it's a lot more convenient, I think. And we've kind of far away from the TV stations here in the villages. So it's more practical to get a streaming service. There are two major ones right now for getting the local and cable channels. And that's YouTube TV and Hulu Live. And today we are going to be focusing on uh, YouTube TV. As well as... Uh, those channels, those people want to get premium channels and free channels, you can get all of these as long as you have a streaming device or a smart TV. So I've listed some of the streaming devices there. We'll talk more about that later. So you do need a streaming device or you need a smart TV to be able to convert your internet signals into TV shows that you can show on your TV and on uh, any other devices you have. So. My arrow here is just to signify that I think over time there's a tendency to go away from local and cable channels and to watch more premium and maybe even some of the free channels. So that's certainly in my experience. Okay, again, uh, YouTube and YouTube TV are very easy to get confused. If you see this, this is not YouTube TV. This is just the cat videos uh, YouTube that we're all familiar with and, you know, well worth watching, but not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about YouTube TV and you can see there's a TV push right next to the red button. It's very easy to get confused if you have them on your devices. So make sure you hit the right one and sign up for the right one. Sometimes you don't even see TV in it. It might just be a little line under the red button to signify it's a TV and they have different icons, different colors, different shapes, so you've got to watch that. But it's basically YouTube TV that we're going to be talking about today. So uh, I've got a poll. Maybe we can try this poll, and then we'll go from there back to the, uh, back to the slide. So let me give you this poll here. I'm going to launch the poll. It's three questions, so if you could answer those three questions but let me end the poll and uh, I'll share the results. So you can see the results. Uh, almost 80% have used Zoom before today um, and about 20% haven't. So that's quite a high percentage. I didn't expect it to be so high. I thought it'd be more like 60% maybe. So it's good. What streaming services are you using? YouTube TV, 69%. Hulu Live, no one. I guess that probably makes sense because why would they come to a YouTube TV presentation if they're happy with Hulu Live? But that's okay. Hulu as well. Netflix is very popular. Again, almost as many people as have YouTube TV as Amazon Prime. They're all identical. So it may be they have all three. Disney Plus and Apple TV are about the same, uh, lower down. Sling, a few people. Just one out of the 39 who voted. Philo, one out of the 39. And other, five out of 39. Okay, so that that tells us where the majority of effort is that people are looking. Have you cut the cord? 64% uh, have cut the cord and 36% have not. So, okay, thank you for your feedback. So let's go back to the slides. This is the picture of the website. I'll, if we have time at the end of the demo, I'll go onto the website and run through some of these sections there with you. Uh, there's a lot of very valuable information, so if you are interested or are using YouTube TV and have not been on the website, I recommend you go through it because it will give you a wealth of information. If you have not used it or are not using it now, there's a little red box there at the top here. It's now got a two-week trial, which ends on May the 14th. So normally it's like a five- to seven-day trial. Occasionally it's one month at a time. It depends on you know, a variety of things, but right now it's a two-week trial, which is pretty good. So if you think you want to try it out, now is a good time to try it out for free. You will have to put in your credit card, 
but make sure you, before you even sign up that you know how to cancel so that uh, you can put your date in the calendar that on such and such a date you're going to cancel it or keep it depending on how you feel about it at that point. So that's uh, the website. We'll come back to that. Um, the key ways that you can watch YouTube TV, obviously number one and I think the biggest one is to use a streaming device. A streaming device, it can be a Google, an Amazon, an Apple or a Roku. They all work and it really depends what ecosystem you want to be part of. Most people do have the Roku and that's what I'll be using much as I like Apple as well. I'll be showing it the TV through the Roku. So streaming devices is one way. They cost anywhere up to 50 and if you get the higher level ones, 100 or more. So uh, again, they're not expensive. It's a one-time charge and there's no monthly fee associated with them other than for any subscription services that you buy into. The other one is a smart TV. A smart TV I don't normally recommend because they've limited into what they can do. They've limited into capability. They were like an afterthought. But what's happened in the last couple of years is that I think Roku was the first to do it. They've put in their streaming device into the TV. So Amazon now does it, uh, Apple does it, and Google does it. So if you are in the market for TV and you're into one of those ecosystems, then I think it doesn't hurt as long as the TV meets the size and the quality you're looking for. It doesn't hurt to have a smart TV that is branded according to the device that you like to use and you're familiar with it. Like if you've got a Roku TV, it's just the same remote that you get with the, uh, with the Roku stick and that's your TV remote because essentially that's all you're looking at. You're looking at the TV through your Roku internet uh, service. So that's the second option. A third option is a mobile device. Um, if you have an iPhone or iPad, you can get YouTube TV on those devices. So that's another thing. It's very portable. It's very mobile. You might be traveling. You might be in a hotel. You can still have access to your YouTube TV account directly with your devices. And then finally, um, you can use your computer, your Mac, or your PC, or your laptop. And uh, those are the four main sources. There are lots and lots of other sources. If you go on the website, it will tell you all the other sources like uh, Xboxes and uh, different devices. But these are the four principal ones that I think most people will be using to watch their TV. Now, right now, I cannot see the, the chat box. I'll wait till we're out of this. So if you have questions, I'll try and answer them at the end. And John and Kevin, by the way, if you see the questions and you want to pop in and give an answer as we go through it, feel free to do that as well. It's always nice to cover the question as we're talking about it. Okay, so here is the list I cut and pasted from the website of all the channels that you can get for our Villages zip code 32162. And you basically are getting stations from the Orlando, Daytona Beach and Melbourne area. And uh, they advertise 70 plus channels. For our zip code, we get about 84. And that's all of these, the locals, the sports, the news, lifestyle channels, and family channels. And then they have some additional networks. I think these are pretty well all a paid subscription. And I'm not sure what these are. These are probably all subscription as well. But you, these are the 84, and these are the additional that you can also get. So a lot of choice. I think the all the locals will be there. A lot of sports, more sports than people were used to maybe with their cable and a satellite um, but this is only a fraction obviously of what's out there in the internet but for fifty dollars a month YouTube TV I think is providing a pretty good bargain and uh, as I say it and Hulu Live are really your main options right now if you want local channels so um, if you need help here's the website on the top here support.google.com YouTube TV YouTube TV, as you know, is owned by Google. So you just go into a browser and you say YouTube TV help and it will bring you to this kind of page. So you don't really need to remember all of that. But then you put in your what your issue is and they will try and uh, solve it for you by giving you, you know, is it this, is it this, is it this? So go through that. And at the end, if it's not answering your question, they'll say need more help. And at that point, it will give you a choice of chat or telephone and they're quite responsive. Normally, if you need help from Google, you have no hope of getting hold of anyone. 
but this is a commercial service that you're paying for and they obviously have to support it and I think they do a pretty good job of supporting it so if we do need help you know don't hesitate to go through the process it takes a few minutes and if it doesn't answer your question with all the pre-canned uh, questions and answers then give them a call or chat with them and uh, I went to chat the chat had zero wait time I think a phone call you might have to wait 10-15 minutes maybe but uh, normally it's not too bad to get through and then finally my last slide here is that if you're traveling uh, YouTube TV is the, has the plus that you it's portable but there's because it's con uh, con concerning TV because it's concerning uh, broadcast rights and digital rights and sports uh, programming rights it gets a bit more complicated so it says here if you're a frequent traveler make sure to use YouTube TV at least once every three months in your home area what this is trying to prevent is people pretending they're living in Michigan and then the next day pretending they're living in San Francisco just to get whatever the local sports are and uh, so what they're saying is okay we let you use it when you travel but if you don't renew it every three months in what you consider your home area is we're going to switch you to whatever a new area is and you can only switch a couple of times a year it says here you can only change your home area twice per year so it discourages people just you know changing areas just for the sake of trying to pick up programming now many of us are snowbirds here in the villages and as long as you go up north once and you come back down in the same year, that's your twice per year, you won't have a problem. Worst case, if you happen to go several times, you either just keep what you've got and accept what you have. So it's not going to be a real problem. Or you can cancel your account and start again. So there's that option as well. If you're a Major League Baseball fan, you're supposed to use YouTube TV at least once every 30 days. Again, because of the broadcast rights, etc. So that's their way of trying to uh, control that. If you move out of the home area, if you suddenly decide you're moving out of the villages back up north or whatever, you just have to update your location in YouTube TV. You don't need to call anyone, it's just all done online. You can only change your home area twice a year, as I said. You have to be physically located in your home area to update your home area. You can't pretend, oh, my home area is the villages but here I am in uh, Michigan or whatever. So you have to be there, that makes sense. And if you're a frequent traveler like we did up there, make sure you use it at least once every three months. And this ensures that they'll give you the correct networks, but more it's to protect against the people trying to get stuff out of their area. You can pause membership, this is interesting. You can pause membership from four weeks to six months. So if you happen to go away and you've got your TV up there that's separate, you can certainly pause it and any recordings will be saved until the end of the pause state but of course if it expires because all recordings are only kept for nine months those six months will be part of that nine months so the recordings will expire after a nine month period so that's useful so I think at this point let me go back into gallery view and we'll see what kind of questions we had on that and then we'll move on to the demo Okay, so let's see if there's any questions. Um, has the villagers relaxed any of their views on mounting an antenna on a rooftop? I think, uh, and you'll have to check with them because they are the authority, not me. But I think the FCC have made a ruling that says that any person has the right to put an antenna uh, that's needed to get the reception they need. So in other words, if you have to put up a 30-foot antenna or a 50-foot antenna, the villagers can't do too much about it. But I think to reflect your own uh, courtesy with your neighbors, you don't want to obstruct views, you don't want to you know, make it look sticking out. So you have to be careful. But the other problem, of course, is that uh, with an antenna, um, the reception here in the villages, unless you happen to live in a village that's high up on a hill, most of the time the reception is very weak some stations like NBC you don't get. So if you're interested in an antenna, and I'd say you only should be getting an antenna if all you want is local channels, because once you want the other channels, then you're going to have to get a service like YouTube TV, which will have the locals with it, and you're not really saving any money. Also, it costs about $250 or so for the antenna, and maybe another $250 for recording. So there's an upfront fee. Plus, if you ever move, 
maybe the people want it, but most likely they didn't want an antenna and you may be forced to remove it. So there's a lot of uh, concerns there. Your best person to talk to is Tom Grooms. If you can't get his uh, phone number, you can contact me. He works, uh, he works and helped a lot of people with antennas. The next question from Paddy was, can you watch on an Amazon Fire Kindle? As far as I know, Paddy, you can, oh, the Kindle, you can watch it on the Amazon Fire Sticks. I don't think you can get it on a Kindle, and I think Maureen is saying the same. So if anyone knows differently, maybe you can let us know. But I don't think so. You'd need a Roku or Fire Stick. Okay, the next I question. I just uh, did a little research on that question about the Kindle, and according to what I'm finding here, on the Kindle Fire device, I, I posted this on the chat, I, if you look in your home screen or the application drawer, the, the uh, YouTube app should be already installed. YouTube TV, and you just click on it to do your basic setup. Um, that's what it's saying here online. I looked at it, but I would, anyone who's got that question, if they're having an issue, I would look, do a search on the internet. I think there's more than one source of information out there on how you might be able to solve this. Okay, no, thanks, Kim. Okay, okay um, there's a few more questions. Let me pick out a few, because again, we won't have time to answer every question, but at the end of the meeting, it ends at 11, I'm happy to, you know, we'll take a five minute break at 11, we'll cut off the recording, but I'm happy to stay online and I'm sure some of the other people here on the call can also stay online and help with any questions. So let's see here. Um, can a Roku, a Fire Stick, etc. get you the internet like a smart TV can? I think it can, but I'm not sure it's a very practical thing to do, but can anyone comment on that? Yeah, I posted on that as well on the chat. Um, there is, you can download, for instance, Firefox on, on an Amazon Fire Stick. And I believe I read something recently that there is a third party vendor out there that you can subscribe to, that you can access the internet on a Roku, but you have to pay a fee to be able to do that. But on the Fire Stick, you can actually download like Firefox, a browser, if you want to access it you know, through, through that. Okay, thanks, Kevin. And I think Kevin answered Maureen's question about the main user. I think the main user does have to be the one to control what the other people sharing the account uh, might use. It's like a family sharing. Once you set it up, other people can use it, but they're going to share the same account. So it's up to the main user to make sure they keep uh, keep track of which area they're in and what's working. Uh, is there any way to arrange your channel lineup? Absolutely. And that's a very useful feature. It's kind of hidden. So I'll cover that when we do the demo. Um, any update on DVR recording first run only? I'm not quite sure what the question is there, David. But you can do DVR recording. So when we come to the demo, you know, maybe you can uh, ask it then. And is there any way to get the Yes Network Yankees baseball on YouTube TV? I don't know the answer to that. If anyone does, uh, maybe you can reply to Janet. Um, I legally that I'm aware of. Yeah, I think the best way of answering that is you get what you get. In other words, if you go on YouTube TV and you look up the channels you're going to get, I showed them there, the 84. If it's part of that list, it's what you get. If it's not part of that list, you know, do a Google search on Yes Network. And a lot of the things that you might want that are not available on YouTube TV are available separately, either on a standalone basis or sometimes with another package. So you have to sort of balance all of that. Okay, let me move on to the next section, which is the um, demo. So let's see if we can get this technology going here. Do you know what that is? That's the Roku screen shaver. Uh, screen shaver. Screen. I'm thinking of Kevin there. Screen saver. Okay, so let me hit the home button. And those of you who use Roku will recognize this. So you've got your menu on the left, and then you switch over to the right with the little icons, and then I'm going to click on YouTube TV. So this is what YouTube TV button looks like on the Roku. It looks different on other devices, but this is what it looks like on Roku. So I click that, and... The first thing you'll see 
is that it normally usually lands on the home screen. So you can see in the middle here, you can see in the middle here it's got home and then uh, live and lively. So let's just talk about the home screen first. So the home screen first has got a little uh, array of uh, icons here. Uh, CNN, CBS, NBC, whatever. So you can look at those. Now it says topics for you. So these are not necessarily something that I chose. They're not what I put in my watch list, but they could be a combination of what I've been watching or a combination of what YouTube t uh, is trying to sell you in terms of maybe to get paid for promoting a particular network. The next level down, you'll see what we'll call genre. So news, shows, movies, etc. So if you're just browsing, this is a good screen to land on because it's going to give you, hey, what's going on right now? And you can see there's a little red bar that appears at the bottom. That's a very useful thing because it tells you that, hey, this program has just started. This program is, you know, two thirds of the way through, etc. So this one's live. These were recordings. This is how far it got on these recordings. This one is live and it's halfway through the program. So that's a good indicator. And then if you go down to the, let's take it down a level. I'm at home right now. You've got to watch where the cursor goes. So I'm down here and I can scroll along there, obviously, to, you know, look, look anything along that line. And if I go down a level again, I'm now here. So let's click on news. So we'll click on news. And it's now giving us political news, morning news, CNN, etc., etc. So again, you've got a wide choice. And again, these are picked for you, which may be things you watch or maybe things they're promoting. And then if you go down, it takes you to that level. Then you go on to On Now. Then you go Peabody Award winners, political news. So they have all these layers and layers of different things. You just have to explore them and uh, try them out. So let's go on to the next one. Let me go back to hit the back button. Sometimes hard to remember which buttons, but the back button takes you up a level at a time. The home button takes you right back to the Roku home screen. So normally you want to use the back button if you want to stay within a program. So let's go to the live next. So I have to go back up to the home button. So here I am, and now I want to go over to live. So down here is all the channels. Now you can see here, this says custom. So the question was asked earlier, you know, can you customize your channel lineup? And the answer is yes. So let me take it up to here. So right now my cursor is here. I go up to custom. If I hit custom, you'll see it's giving me a choice between custom and default. So what is default? If I click on that, I'm now in default. Default are the channels that come uh, with the service. And how many were there? There were, what, 84 of them? So if I scroll down here, I'm going to find 84 channels. So that's point number one. Point number two, it's in whatever sequence it is. And if you want to find something, you've got to you know, stay with that sequence. But the beauty is that you can set it up so that only the channels you want to watch by clicking on default, and going to custom by switching on that you can now put whatever channels you want whether it's 10 or uh, 20 or 30 whatever the number might be plus you can put it in the sequence that you want so whatever you like to watch most you put at the top whatever you like to watch second you put there and you can keep going down very easy to do there's only one little challenge you cannot do it on here like if I said to you okay let me show you how to do it I can't show you here because it can't be done here. You have to do it either on the internet, on the website, or on your mobile app. So if you have YouTube TV and you have a mobile device like an iPad, it's uh, definitely worth your while to put the app on your device. If you don't have the device, then you have to go to um, YouTube TV on the computer. And then you go to the same button here. You work your way up to the, let's pretend it's there, because. I may not be able to demonstrate it later, but let's say you're up here. If you're on your iPad and you were to click that, it would show here, it would show custom and default and edit. And when you click on edit, 
it would bring you up to the list of all the channels that you have that you, the YouTube TV provides with a little red minus for where the uh, channel is. So if you already have PBS and you have CBS, it will show a red minus next to these. And then later on, when you get to the channels you aren't watching, it'll just be a circle. And if you wanted to watch that particular channel, you click on the circle, it changes to a red minus and is now added to your custom uh, view. And then if you want to put that one that you just added to the top, say, you go to the other side and there'll be three little lines and the three little lines you put your cursor on it or your thumb on it and you slide it up and then you put it up to wherever you want in the array. So that's basically it. If you're really interested when we come to the Q&A, let me know and I can demonstrate it. I'd have to switch to the iPad. But I don't want to switch just yet because I'm using the iPad as my Tony, camera. Tony John here. Go ahead. I hate to interrupt, but um, I could demonstrate that when we get to the Q&A. I've got that screen up and ready to go if you can allow me to share that later. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so we're back to the YouTube TV and I showed you how to get the programming on live. So the next question that most people have is, how do you do a recording? And it's not necessarily totally intuitive. Uh, once you know it, it's easy, but until you know it, how do you do it? So let's pretend we wanted to record uh, one of these programs. Let's say Nightline. Okay, so we got 24 minutes left here, 1024. Okay, so here you are, you're on the channel, you want to record it, where do you go? So you have to put your arrow down and it brings up it brings up an array of buttons which tend to disappear quickly and can you see in the array of buttons there's a plus if I hit the plus it will then say um, I have to get to the plus now I hit the plus and it says your show added to your library will record upcoming sessions in, in you know, future episodes so that's how you record it. Now I'm recording it, you can see the plus has changed to a tick. So when you see the tick, that means that show is being recorded and will continue to be recorded until you go back and you hit that again. So let's pretend uh, that we've, okay, we recorded several days and we don't need to record it anymore. We've now here, we're watching the, this particular channel and we just go back down and we hit the tick again and it changes to a plus. We've stopped recording new episodes. Recordings are watchable until they expire. So that is uh, how you do recording. Um, again, you can get lots more information. I think the best bet is to play around with these things. We don't have a lot of time to go through every button, but I think the recording is the key one and getting your channels organized is also a key one. So let's now go back to, after we recorded it, where do they appear? So we'll go back, 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 back. And now I'm back to the home screen here. We were at live uh, just now. So now we'll go to the library. The library is where all your recordings are. So right now, this is my recordings. And uh, I've got these programs recorded. So let's go down and take a look. Okay, let's look at, uh, let's say, 60 minutes. Okay, so these are all the programs that have been recorded. This was recorded last Sunday, the week before, the week before that. It goes as far back as you were recording it. And don't forget, they've kept for nine months. So a plus is that YouTube allows you to record as much as you want, every channel, every program, and there's no limit, which is really nice. But the minus, to me anyway, is that once you've recorded it and you stop recording, the recordings still sit there. I would like the ability to be able to delete them and remove them. I don't think that ability exists. So if any of you on the call know that, on the meeting know that you can do that, I'd really appreciate it. I think it's going to come, but I don't think it's there yet. The other thing that I found was that at one point in time, very recently, I was looking at all my recordings and I had no way of knowing how, if I'd watched it, watch half of it, watch any of it, watch none of it, 
So um, that was disappointing. So I did call YouTube uh, TV help and they told me what I was doing, what I was missing. And what I was missing is I had a setting and I don't know how it happened. I don't think I said it. Maybe it was a default, but I had a setting that said pause history and pausing history meant that it was not showing the history. Once I changed that switch, and I'll try and go to it and show it to you, but once I change that switch, it now puts, you can see there's a little red line here. That means I've watched that up to this amount. This one means I haven't watched it. Now I might have actually watched it when it was live, but it doesn't know that. All it knows is that the recording has not been watched. So if you are going to keep track of it, you want to make sure you go into settings, make sure the pause history button is off, and then you will get the recording. Because I know a lot of people uh, are looking for that and don't see it and don't know how to get it. So that's a very interesting thing to know about. Could I just interject something here? Um, regarding getting rid of programming that's on your library that you don't watch anymore, uh -huh. I have found that um, if I go and uncheck the program from the uncheck the program to be recorded, within a couple days it disappears out of my library. I, I have had that I have had that experience also if I uncheck the program from recording, then the recordings very quickly all disappear. And Tony, to answer your question, what if I want to watch, you know, again, I think the answer is don't uncheck it. But if you're totally done with it, like I recorded, let's say, a one-time program, the Academy Awards, and then I didn't want to look at it for nine months, so I unchecked it and it went away. But if I want to watch something in the future, just don't uncheck it. Okay, good, good feedback. Thank you, Kevin and and Joe, thank you. Okay, so let's go on back to the, we're, so we're in the library. So basically in the library, if you want to watch a particular recording, you just pick the recording that you want to watch and you click on that. So there's nothing much more to say about that. Um, so I think that that pretty well covers, let me think if there's anything else worthwhile talking about on... Uh, okay, you said you were going to uh, show them how to uncheck that history or check the history thing okay let's okay. let's try that tony when you get to youtube tv uh -huh. uh, to the right of the live tab is an icon for your account right if you hit the icon right that's where you'll find the setting that's it that's what i was looking for so here it is this is what you're saying so this is your profile normally it might have a picture in it so if i click on that so i got to get over there okay so you click on that and now it brings up a little menu here. This is what we want, settings. So go down to settings and click on that and go to privacy. Oops, privacy. And see pause search history off, pause watch history off. If you want to keep track of what you've been searching for, then leave that off. If you don't want to keep track of it, you pause it. So that means you're not going to keep track of it. This one I've kept off. If I were to go back and turn it on, it would stop the recording of what I've watched. So this was what I had on, unbeknownst to me, but by switching it off, it now started. It didn't go retroactive, but it started to show what I've been watching. So you may want to all check your settings. Again, go back to the top. Go back to the top. Go back to here. Move across to here. And then hit settings. And then hit privacy and then turn pause history, make sure that's off. Let's see if we can take a few questions there. How to record something live that you are watching live from Bob and Carol. Um, basically, when you're watching something live, you have to hit the down arrow or whatever your device does to get the menu, and there's a menu with the plus, you hit the plus. So it's just a question of find the plus sign, and you have to play around with that. As I say, I don't think it's as uh, friendly as I would like to see. I would like to see these buttons always visible and, you know, in a corner or something. But no, they kind of make it so it's hidden and you have to figure out how to get at it. Um, in fact, uh, John answered that question. Hit the down arrow twice and the option shows. Thank you, John. 
um, how to move the channel tiles on your YouTube channel from bottom to top if you have numerous streaming channels. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Um, this is just um, the web-based version of how to get to YouTube TV. So it's tv.youtube.com. And I am logged in with my user. And Tony mentioned this earlier that some of us have our little picture under the settings area. And I have one because I've uploaded it to my Google account. But if you click on that, you'll get settings as a choice. And this is the area where you set up your guide. And this is the live guide right here. You click on that button. And I have set up my default a little differently for our family needs. I just lost it again. I'll bring it right back. Apologize for that. Too many clicks. So I have set this up for our family's needs and you of course could set it up for yours. You're going to see that we have the golf channel listed first and this was pro co or pre COVID-19 that that was a pretty important channel to me. So I have that sitting right at the top of my list and uh, I'm very interested in what's happening with the financial markets. So I like CNBC at the top. My wife watches investigation discovery on a regular basis. So we've moved that one to the top. And as I scroll through, you'll see this is what the Pearson family has chosen to have the order of their channels. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue scrolling Boy. until I get down to the point where there's no longer red check boxes. And you'll notice that there's nothing for the tennis channel. So YouTube TV offers the tennis channel and we're not tennis fans. So I have unchecked that as an option, meaning when I show my default screen, excuse me, my custom screen, it does not list the tennis channel. Uh, if you really wanted to get high and tight with this, you could say, I only watch 10 channels. So you could check your 10 channels that you like and uncheck the ones you don't like. So I have quite a few at the bottom here that I don't even have checked, some that I do have checked. And you can pick and choose as you like. And here's the real, where the fun begins. Once you have them checked, once you have them where you want them um, for viewing or not viewing, there's a little area over here. It doesn't have to be over there. You'll see a hand possibly on the screen. And if you take and drag, you can move these particular channels into whatever area you want. So in my case, I'm tired of the golf channel since they no longer show things I want. So I'm going to grab the golf channel and start moving it. And I could move it down, down, down. Okay, okay, now it's a little more out of my way. And I don't see that any longer. Now, once I do that, this question came up also, and that is, does every TV have the ability to have this set up? And the answer is no. It's set up per user account. So this is my user account that I'm currently logged in as John Pearson. And I want to go back into settings again and show you the family sharing option. The family sharing option allows you to add up to a total of six family members. So, one of you has to be the family manager. So I have added my wife as a member. And the reason I did that is because she exclusively watches one TV in the kitchen. And that allows her to log into the YouTube account that we possess. And she can set up her own personalized guide for that particular user account, which is then logged into that TV. Um, so in our case, we've set up two, and that has allowed us to fine tune that just a little bit with the family sharing option. So to summarize again, the live guide is under the settings. You can choose the channels that you want. You can move them around by dragging them. And then Tony showed this earlier, but once you're on the live screen, Now mine shows up over here on the right hand side and it says sort by custom. And you'll notice that the golf channel is no longer listed at the top. 
and I think I moved it down about five spaces and there it is right down there now um, on that spot. And the first time I turn on a TV in my house that I'm logged into, it would show up that way. I can talk go back and forth between my default and that puts everything back on the screen in the order that they choose or custom in this case. And again, to reiterate, there's only a single custom setting per user. So if you want a different user, I would have to come out here. I would have to log out. I would have to log uh, my wife in to get her custom account. So that's basically how you do it. Unless there's any other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this share and let Tony take over again. John? Okay. Yes. I'd like to add uh, on the subject that you're talking about, uh, there's also with YouTube TV, and this is not a problem for most villagers because we generally have just two people in the house. But if you had additional people in the house, there's a limitation of three streams at one time. Three TVs or two TVs and a, you know, a cell phone, whatever you're using. If a fourth person attempts to sign in, you'll get a message that says all three streams are in use. And I think you get an option on who you get to kick out too, if I remember right. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we've never run into a problem with the three. Uh, we have two on almost all, all day long, but uh, we've never run into a problem with the three, but you are correct. It is three simultaneous. And uh, again, I think that's good balance for what they're providing for the price. Okay, thank you. We've got about five minutes left. So rather than, uh, sh I was going to show you the website, but the website, I think you can all research yourself. I kind of showed you there's a help there that you can look at all the channels and they, they give you some useful information. So please take advantage of the help uh, section. There's a lot of uh, good information there. Plus you can contact people, phone them, chat with them, etc. So uh, I think the remaining time till 11 o'clock, maybe we'll take questions. So if anyone uh, has a question, maybe you can unmute yourself and we'll do it verbally for the time being. Hi, this is Barbara. I have a question. We have an Amazon Fire Stick and I have don't I'm not sure what the microphone is used for. It, if I ask for a certain program, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Anybody out there know? Well, I can say that if it's if it's like a Roku, I'm not a Fire Stick guy, but if it's like a Roku, it's very specific to the Roku things. So it's it's looking inside of the Roku world once you talk to it on the microphone and uh, searching things through all the Roku apps that you might be looking for if you're searching for a particular show. So as a good example, you can't use it as a search device specifically for YouTube. You're using it as a search device for the Roku device. And uh, that possibly is the case with the Amazon Fire Stick that it must we often be. think that we could use it just for a search device for, for the YouTube TV and it unfortunately doesn't work that way. Thank you. Hey, Barbara, this is David Bales. One of the things you have to do with it is continue to hold down while you're asking it the question. Thank you. Um, as long as we're kind of on questioning, um, you'd be surprised how many questions that I get um, through many of these different venues where if, if you went to Google and type that very same question in and hit enter, you'd be surprised at the answers you get very quickly. So, I mean, I'm not saying that every answer is out on Google and every answer is the right answer, but you know, I, that's certainly my go-to source when I I'm stumped and uh, you know, it's a good place to maybe just give it a shot. Good John. Okay. It's uh, two minutes to 11. Why don't we do one more question? And then as I say, we'll take a five minute break. I'll close off the recording and the meeting. And uh, but I'll stick around and anyone else like John, if you can stick around for a few minutes and we'll try Tony. and answer some of the other questions. Go ahead. Tony. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, you were going to show us how you get more than six hours out on the live TV guide. Ah, good question. Good question. OK, here we go. I've launched a new poll and I'd like you all to see how far forward can you see live TV programming 
with YouTube TV. So I'd like you all to put in what you think is the answer. And here's the answer. You're all right, because it varies depending on what device you're on and how you do it. So let's start with the two hours. If you're on an iPad and you go into the live guide, you can only see the current and the next hour, which to me is kind of useless. If you go right to the end where the channel is and click on that, then it brings up all the programming for that particular channel for the next 24 hours. So the answer for if you're on an iPad is two hours if you just look at the guide, 24 hours if you go to the uh, channel guide and go right all the way to the end. So that's that. Now how do you get seven days? Well seven days you go on a desktop. So if you're on a desktop and you're looking at YouTube TV, let me see if I have it here. Okay, can you see now we're on we're on the internet, but if you're on an iPad, it you know it would be similar, but er, as I say, everyone's different. So now if I go to live, so now I'm on live. And if I go down, you see this is the interesting thing with the uh, YouTube TV. They, they have Close that. They have, I shut down the TV, I didn't shut down the sound on here. They have all the channels here, but not, not only do you get what's coming up, but you also get a little icon of what's live at that point in time. Now again, that varies. If you're on a machine that doesn't have the capability of power and, and you don't have fast enough internet, it'll just be like a screenshot. But most of the time you can get, and sometimes you get all of them. You can see I've got several going at the same time. This is a fairly powerful laptop, but sometimes you only see just the current one uh, going live. So going forward, you, you can see all the um, you can see all the things coming up. But if I go forward, it will only go forward by about by about a week. If I click on say the channel here, PBS, it will now bring up uh, that particular program. But if you if you go forward, it'll go forward a week. Now, how do you get more than a week? This is interesting. If you go to the search box and then you type in something like, let's say, Sunday morning. That's a show that comes up on Sunday on CBS. There's the show. And if you look down at the bottom here, today is what, the 6th or something. So there's the 10th. This is coming up Sunday. And there's the um, 17th. So again, it's, it's gone more than a week. On some shows, it might only show a week. and some shows, it shows several weeks. So that's another way of getting at programming. Like if today is Monday or Tuesday and you want to record a program on Sunday, you know, in the past, I thought you had to kind of wait for it to come along before you could get to it. But actually, depending on what device you are, you can sometimes go further. And the last thing I'll show you then before we shut off is if you have a particular sports team, let me get rid of this again. If you have a particular sports team that you like, Packers or Patriots or whatever, you put that in, Packers. And right now it's probably not a good example because there isn't much sports going on. But see, it'll show up coming May the 8th, uh, May the 14th. And I think if there was a lot more uh, going on, it would go even further than that. But the point is, even if you don't worry about this, you pick your team and then you hit Add, and now anything to do with that team, any game they're playing, any you know series they have, it will now show up in your feed. So, you know the search box. You know recognize this is Google. You know take advantage of the search box because it's very powerful. It's a good way of getting at your programming. And I know maybe the voice button doesn't do it, but certainly the search box on YouTube TV I think will give you most of the answers you want. So I'd like to close at this point. I'd like to thank you all very much for participating. I don't know, Kevin, if you want to say a few words, I'm going to stop sharing so we can get back to gallery review. And John, if you want to add anything, and then I'll stick around. We'll take a five-minute break. I'll stop the recording. And then anyone who wants to stick around and ask more questions, we can try and take a shot at those. Kevin? Thanks, Tony. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for taking the time and joining us today. And also, if, if you could, um, just make a notation in your chat box, if you would, if you found this to be useful and if you like this format, something that you would be interested in seeing us do something again along this line. 
it'll help us identify what is the best way for us to move forward. I have no idea when we will be able to meet again as a uh, regular club physically. Uh, my guess is that it may not be until the fall. So this may be the best that we've got until then. We'll have to wait and see. But I hope everyone stays safe. Thank you very much for joining. John, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I just, everybody stay safe. If you've got any questions, you know, uh, uh, feel free to shoot me an email online too. Uh, I've got my email listed on uh, the website and uh, Tony could probably take questions that way too, but um, always available. I'm still looking for things to do. I, I, I need uh, some enrichment time. So more than happy to help out. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, everyone. We'll keep in touch. And as I say, we'll come back in five minutes if you're interested. Yeah.